Well, good day, everyone. Uh, my name is William Utek. I'm the mission executive here at our Minnesota South District. And uh, I'm blessed today to be uh, with a friend of mine, a friend of ours, f a fellow co-worker in God's kingdom, Janetta Cooper. Janetta is the principal uh, of the school at St. Paul Lutheran in Prior Lake, and she's also the director of the Early Childhood Center, the Early Childhood Program. She's got a great background in education and is getting more, and uh, so welcome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. I am excited to be here. I'm glad you could be here. <laughs> so uh, <coughs> uh, why, why don't we begin, Janetta, by having you tell us something about yourself, your history, your background, how it is that you came to be here doing what you're doing in ministry. Okay. Um, so I am an educator, um, not um, by choice, I don't think. I didn't start out uh, wanting to be an educator. Um, I started out with a degree in criminal justice and wanted to go into law, mm -hmm. um, but somehow ended up um, in child care and have been there ever since, going on about 30 years. Um, so an amazing journey, um, originally from Texas, um, was with an organization there for almost 14 years before we moved here to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, so here I am continuing my education um, at CSP and um, working um, at St. Paul's, which okay. has really been amazing. All right, um, so uh, tell us something about your duties and responsibilities at, at where you're called right now or where you're, where you're serving right now, and, and also tell us something about uh, the degree you're pursuing at Concordia St. Paul. Okay. Um, so I am currently working toward my master's in early childhood education um, and will continue with my doctorate in education once I'm complete in about two months. So praise God. God. <laughs> um, it's been a long journey. Um, so at um, St. Paul's, I am currently the um, SPLS principal as well as the ECC director, which um, have a lot of hats to wear at that point. So um, not only are you monitoring and mentoring our students, mm -hmm. but also the mentoring of our educators, which is one of my passions um, because we have to equip our educators to be ready for the challenge. Um, and all of that, of course, encompasses what we do through Christ. Mm -hmm. um, so it has to be um, equal not only the education part, but um, how they view us um, and what we are doing every single day. Um, so those are probably some of the most important things that I do um, is when I'm able to kind of pull those educators aside and do some staff development with them. Can you share with us something a little bit about your faith journey mm -hmm. throughout your, you know, you just didn't happen here. Right. God right. got you here. Yes, he did. He did. Um, and I, I, I like to say that it was maybe an accident, but you know, we know that God does nothing by accident. Um, I have been um, a believer in Christ my entire life. I was raised in the church, um, not a Lutheran church, but um, a Baptist church. Mm -hmm. My husband is a Baptist pastor um, here in Minnesota, which is how we ended up in Minnesota. Um, but I also like to say that I am a Christian first, um, and that's in my heart the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. um, so I love Christ. I, I want to make sure that our students love Christ. I want to make sure that our educators understand the importance of loving Christ. Mm -hmm. um, when I talk to parents um, and get them into the school, that is by far the first thing I tell them. Mm -hmm. We are a Christian school. We love Christ, and we teach our students to love Christ. So Get everybody gathering around Jesus. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Great. So, uh, so tell me, why are you doing? I mean, if you probably did, it's your love for Jesus. Uh, what makes your ministry important at at this time, at this place? You know, right now. Oh, this time and this place. Um, we all have an appointed time and an appointed place. Um, I look at the state of our world. And I know that um, this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, I, I understand that um, the need for Christ in our world mm -hmm. is, is huge. Um, so our part sometimes is very small and very minute. You know, God does the rest. We do a little bit. Um, I am a firm believer that we are all called to a place at a time, um, a time such as this, mm -hmm. right? And so um, I'm excited that mm -hmm. God has called me to this place at this time, um, it's needed. 
it's needed um, not only in our world, but in our little small community that we call our school and our little small community that we call our church. Um, I think that it is needed, a, a love for Christ, those that love Christ coming together, spreading the love and showing others how to love. Showing others how to love. Mm -hmm. um, so you have, you have been, uh, how long have you been with, uh, connected to St. Paul Prior Lake now? Um, almost three years. Almost three years. Mm -hmm. So you know you know the congregation. You know you know your way around. Mm -hmm. You know you know who people are, mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, hopefully uh, it's been a great ride so far for right. you. Right. It has been. It has been a great ride. I um, I don't have um, much negative to say. Mm -hmm. um, I love my job. I love coming to work every day. Um, that doesn't mean that every day is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't mean that um, some things won't happen that make you really fall to your knees and say, okay, Lord, are you sure? Yeah. Um, but um, at the end of the day, um, if you can still wake up in the morning and you're excited uh -huh. to go and do what you do, um, I deem myself very blessed. Sure. And that's what I tell my educators is, is you have to have a love of what you do. You have to have a love for our students and a love for Christ to get up every morning, come to this place and give your all. Sure. I, I remember w we sent our we sent our daughters to a Lutheran school to mm -hmm. a Lutheran elementary school and and, and my wife is a uh, is a physician okay. so our principal at the time was one of her patients and, oh. and he came in and asked how she was doing she said I hadn't had a very good day I, I somebody really got mad at me today mm -hmm. and he said just one person got mad. <laughs> The right. life of a principal, <laughs> Absolutely. right? Absolutely. It can be kind of crazy. Yes, yes, it can be. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so you've been in your position, you've figured out your way around, you've noticed that, that, uh, that not only at St. Paul Prior Lake, but in our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregations, that, that we're still primarily white. Mm -hmm. What is it like being a uh, a non-white leader in a predominantly white congregation and situation. <laughs> How's it, how have you found that? Um, sometimes challenging, but not as challenging as you would think. Um, I think we've been raised, and I'm gonna say we, as in I'm gonna say black people. You know, mm -hmm. um, we've been raised to um, be cautious. Okay. Um, I learned that from my grandparents. I learned it from my, my parents. Be cautious when you are around people, you know, white people, I guess, if you want to say. Um, it was hard to mm -hmm. kind of step away from that because um, I understand how they felt that mm -hmm. way. Being way back then, um, mm -hmm. way back then, um, I find myself sometimes still having that in in my in my ma in mm -hmm. my mind. Um, I know that not everyone is excited that I'm there. Um, you know, reality is what it is. Um, so I know that everyone's not excited. That doesn't prevent me from still loving what I do mm -hmm. and knowing why I'm there. I think that's part of it. You have to know why you're called right. to a place at a certain time. Um, so not always easy, yeah. but but it's okay. It's okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, so how can you share with us just a little bit about? Uh, certainly, you have a very strong sense of call, mm -hmm. which is which is why we get up and keep doing what we're doing, Absolutely. right? We have a strong sense of call. Yes. God wants us here mm -hmm. at this time, at this place. Mm -hmm. But can you share a little bit about uh, uh, the, you know some of the uh, difficulties you have experienced? Of course. Well, um, I would say some of the most difficult um, issues that I have is when you walk into a building and um, there's a look that you will get. Um, I like to call it that, are you sure you're supposed to be here look? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Are you sure you landed in the right place? Look, yeah. uh -huh. um, so that look, um, you know what that look means. Sure. Um, I would say that that's probably one of the most uncommon, uncomfortable um, situations. Or when you speak to a group of people, maybe standing in the hallway talking, mm -hmm. um, and maybe one speak back, um, or you still get the look within this little group. 
uh, that's probably some of the most um, some of the saddest mm -hmm. things that I I have noticed. Um, whether it's just walking through the building or it's walking in um, on a Sunday for um, like our backpack blessing, um, and and the looks were well, who is this person and and are you sure you're you're supposed to be here? Uh -huh. um, I would have to say that's some of the most um, troubling sure. parts. Okay. Um, so along with the rest of us, mm -hmm. uh, you got to, be, because you live in the metro area, mm -hmm. uh, you, you got to kind of witness and, and just watch all of the unrest that happened here this past summer. Yes. Um, what, what were you thinking when all of that was kind of happening? Um, I would say my first thought was, it finally happened. Okay. I, um, it wasn't a surprise. It wasn't, um, I wasn't taken aback by what was happening. I was more um, thinking, well, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh -huh. It finally happened. Um, I, I would say that that would be the take of, of, of most people of color. Okay. Would probably stand back and say, we were wondering when it would get to this level, okay. um, to this level of we've had enough. Um, and sometimes that may not come out right, or it may come out um, that looks like a ton of chaos um, and a ton of unrest, but it was, I think it was bound to happen. Okay. So unpack that a little more for mm -hmm. us. Why? I mean, why were you not as uh, as surprised mm -hmm. as probably uh, many of your Anglo neighbors? Right, um, because um, <laughs> I like to say I've been this color my whole life. Uh huh. Um, I know what comes with it. I know um, I know what it is to walk in your neighborhood. Uh, and, and, and still get looks or mm -hmm. to stand in your front yard and passing by cars to look at you as if, I think you're in the wrong neighborhood. Uh -huh. um, so when you see so much on the news um, and you hear um, so many stories, so mm -hmm. many stories, so many stories. And and, and, and just for clarity's mm -hmm. sake, I mean, your, your husband is a pastor of a, of a uh, Minneapolis congregation, is yes. he not? Yes. So you're you're hearing and seeing story. Is is that congregation predominantly black or is it? Uh, it is. It is predominantly. Mm -hmm. So you're hearing and seeing stories from your brothers and sisters in right. Christ of that congregation all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And not you know, and not just um, our congregation, but I mean our families. I mean we're black. Right. <laughs> so our families have their own stories. We, as in my husband and I, we have our own stories. All right. Um, it was to a point, even before the unrest, um, that I would be nervous for my husband to go to the store by himself. I would always say, if you're going to the store, I'm getting in the car with you. Um, because we and knew... And this is going to the store in Prior Lake. This is going to the store in Prior Lake. All right. Um, I knew the pot was boiling, okay. um, and at some point, you, you know, it will boil. It will over. boil over. Absolutely, and uh -huh. I think that's that's where we were. Um, that's kind of where we are. That's why there wasn't a huge surprise. Okay. In what happened? All right. How are how are things now? Do you think uh, socially here in in the in Minnesota, the metro area? Where do you think we are? Is it, it are we on a trajectory of getting better, or is it getting <laughs> the same, or is it getting worse? Um, I, um, I don't think it's getting any worse. Um, I don't think it's getting any better yet. All right. Um, I think that there's another comfort kind of setting in. Um, the high point is 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 gone. So we've had the huge unrest and we've had the destruction. I think people forget. Mm -hmm. Well, that's history people forget um, that, well, this happened, and this is why it happened, and this is how it happened. Um, it has to continue to be in the forefront of what we do in order for real change to happen. Um, I, I've been asked, so how do we how do we do that? Well, it's, it's a conversation. It's a conversation with me and you, but then the way it stops is because 
after my conversation with you, you don't tell anyone else. Okay. Right? The conversation ends. Yeah. So it has to be an ongoing conversation. So I share my story with you. Um, then you have to share it with someone else. And then that person has to share. And it has to be continuous in order for true change to happen. It will be forgotten. Okay. Um, and unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. it will be forgotten. So... Um, what do you wish i mean if we're what do you wish not only the uh the majority population which is still anglo mm -hmm. but what do you wish the majority population of the church body where you're serving mm -hmm. which is predominantly 95 percent anglo right. what do you, you wish we knew or could learn or could understand better because we're not seeing we're obviously not seeing everything, mm -hmm. right? We all we all come from our own worldview and everything. Right. You have a worldview. You know that we have a worldview. Mm -hmm. What what do we need to learn from yours, and 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 how can we do that? Right. Um, I think one of the things that um, not you, not just you need to learn. I think we as humans. Um, I wish I could walk into any church and be welcomed as a believer. <laughs> I think it has to start there. So if I walk into um, my church where I serve, or the church where I serve, I should be able to walk through those doors and nobody see that I'm a person of color, but they see a person coming to our church because this is where they want to be today. Mm -hmm. um, what are they seeking? Do you need help? Why are you here? Um, it has to be an awareness, an individual awareness um, of the people serving in that church. It has to be each individual saying, you know what, that part really isn't important. The fact that she has brown skin, that part's not important. She's here at church for a reason. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know how you get that across to those who um, have never lived their lives that way. Okay. Um, can you go in and automatically change their views? Probably not. Um, but I think it has to start from a generational standpoint where someone has to say, okay, this is how we are going to believe. Um, and then you pass that down. Um, it's going to be hard to pass it up, Right. I think. Right. Yeah. It's going to be very hard to pass it up. Uh, so you, you, you've heard the statistic, I'm sure, as, as well as most of our, our viewers here. You know, religious demographers have been saying for some time now that you know, the most segregated hour of the week is 10 o'clock mm -hmm. on Sunday morning when everyone is going to their own church, and not, not the neighborhood church. Right. It's a church where everybody looks, looks like, like me, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. From your perspective, is that an issue? That needs to be con that needs to be addressed. Um, I think people should worship where they're comfortable. I think that's the only way true worship is going to come about. Um, so if I am at your church and I am uncomfortable because everyone doesn't look like me, mm -hmm. um, then I may not be getting all that I need out of that <laughs> worship service right. because my mind is elsewhere. Sure. Um, I I don't think that just because we have this huge integration of a congregation that you're still not going to have those issues. Those issues will still be present. Right. Um, you know, over time, we, we're good pretenders. We can pretend all day long. Um, as in, I see you, I'm going to speak to you, but I really don't like you. Um, we could do that all day. Is that the place, is God's house the place for that? Uh -huh. I don't think it is. I don't think that that's the place where I want to walk in and know that half of the congregation doesn't like me simply because of the color of my skin. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather be able to worship freely in a place of worship where I am comfortable and I'm, and I'm welcomed and I'm not worried about, you know, the person sitting two seats down or mm -hmm. two seats up from me. I'm turning around and seeing me and knowing that they wish I weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we be? How do we begin to change that? 
Um, I think that part of that change, um, this helps. I think this helps. Um, there has to be um, an awareness that, um, first of all, we all have feelings, right? We all bleed the same color. And you have to have that in your heart. It can't just be one of those things when you just walk by and go, yeah, I know I'm supposed to love this person, but I really can't stand them. Um, it has to be an individual, individual lesson. Um, an individual ask for forgiveness, an individual relationship with Christ, an individual, it all has to be a person saying, I don't want to be like this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want my children to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to teach my children this. I don't want to teach my grandchildren this. Um, I, I don't know how you, how, I, don't, I don't know how you do that. Because again, it has to be a person making a conscious decision to not be that way. Yeah, and if, if we're gonna get to the point where we're not just, that's not our automatic mm -hmm. re reaction, right. I, we, we need to get to know each other better. Absolutely, absolutely. I can remember, you know, my mother saying, um, you know, don't trust. But I also know that if I had stayed with that I probably wouldn't be where I am mm -hmm. because in my heart of hearts, I wouldn't trust anyone I work with. Um, how do you grow uh, professionally and spiritually with that thought embedded in your heart? Mm -hmm. um, so it has to be, it had to be me, an individual saying, I don't know if that's right. You know, right. I, I can understand how my mother yeah. and my grandmother would feel that way, right. but I don't know if that's, that, that's and, all the way it right. It just might be right. time to take a, a chance with another brother or sister absolutely. in Christ. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So that's what I mean by it has to be individual. It has uh -huh. to be a choice that each person makes to say, yeah, I choose to not believe that. And I right. choose to not live my life that way. That way. Right, yeah. um, because I want more. You know, God created us all. How, do, how can I not see that we are all In his design. image, made in his image. Every single one of us. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Yeah, all right. So if you could change one thing uh, about the church body within which you are serving, the Minnesota District, Minnesota South District is part of that, Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is part of that. If, if, if Jeanetta Cooper had a magic wand and, and she could change one thing, what would that one thing be? Oh, I would say awareness, awareness. I think that there is so much um, misinformation okay. out, um, not just about my culture, but yours as well. Um, I would have to say communication, um, but then what comes with that is, is an open mind. Mm -hmm. You have to have an open mind. Um, I don't know how you get an open mind through to everyone, but I think this may be a good place to start. Sure, because if we can't, if if we can't do that right. as forgiven sinners, mm -hmm. people who love Jesus, right. just as much as everybody else in the church loves Jesus, mm -hmm. we can't do that. If the right. gospel doesn't change us, right, uh, then can't really have much hope for the rest of the world. Absolutely. We? Yeah, so. As, uh, as the leaders of, um, we are to bring people to Christ. Mm -hmm. um, we are to be missionaries, you know, for Christ. Uh, it's very difficult to be a missionary when you have hatred in your heart. Then are you only a missionary for a set of people or are you a missionary for everyone? Right. As we should be. We should be for everyone. We have to be. Otherwise, we've missed the mark. Mm -hmm. We've missed it. So how can, how can the Minnesota South District, you know, the, the congregations that make up the district, the people in the congregations, the church's people after all, uh, how, can, 
how can we best support you in your ministry? Um, I think that, <laughs> I mean, I, I, and I, I don't want to continue to go back to, to this, but I think this is a good way mm -hmm. um, to do it. I think it will help for others to see a conversation between the two of us. I, I think it will help for others to say, oh, well, she's black and she's there. Maybe it's not as bad. Right. Um, maybe they are a little more welcoming or maybe it's not what it used to be. Um, I remember a time when, mm -hmm. um, if we can change that, I remember a time when, um, that would be very helpful. This helps me to be a little more understanding as well. Um, I still have my mother in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always will have her in my ear. Um, mm -hmm. She's in heaven, but she's, she's here. <laughs> 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 um, so I have to also continue um, to change my perspective um, and to not kind of get back into that, um, that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that this is helpful for me as well. I, I am pretty much equipped with, um, with all the help to do what I do every day, and I'm very grateful. I don't believe that I would be um, as content as I am mm -hmm. if I felt I did not have the support that I needed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that it's, a, it's, it's good. It's a good place to start. And of course, nothing's perfect, but, um, but I'm appreciative that I am able to do this. Being a person of color, I think probably the first, um, first in the area at least. Yeah. 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 Well, God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. As you, uh, carry out the, 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 the great calling that, uh, to which God has called you. Thank you so much. Thanks for being there. Thanks for being here. And uh, let the conversation continue. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. God bless you. God bless us, everyone. Yes. <laughs>